All right, so let's continue. So rule number eight, okay? So when it comes to these words that indicate portion, such as a lot, a majority, some, chaka all. So given earlier in this section is reversed. No? And we are guided by the noun after of. All right? So kanina, so rule natin, ang verb daw is pagkatapos ay bago mag-off phrase. No, yung kaninang rule. No, I don't remember what rule it is. Okay, sabi to on, bago mag-off phrase yung uh, subject. No, but in this kind of uh, words, no, which indicates portion, such as a lot, majority, some, all, okay, ang subject natin ay pagkatapos ng off phrase. Okay, or nasa off phrase mismo. Okay, if the noun after off thou is singular, use a singular verb. If it is plural, use a plural verb. Okay, allow me to annotate first. All right, so ito. Sinasabi natin of phrase, no? Of, ito, of the pies, kung nandito. Okay? So, no matter na meron tayong a lot, all, some, tsaka majority here, okay? Mag-perpertain mag, uh, pa rin tayo dun sa subject, which is pi. Pi is singular. Therefore, all of the subjects here must be singular. Okay? All of the pi has disappeared. All of the pi is gone. Some of the pi is missing. That is the correct answer. Okay? So, kailan siya magiging, uh, kailan siya magiging plural? Kahit meron tayo a lot, all, some. Kapag yung pi naging pies. Okay? A lot of the pies have disappeared. All of the pies are gone. Okay? Some of the pies are missing. Doon lang siya magiging plural. Okay? Pero kung yung pi, no, is pi, which is singular, kahit meron pa yung a lot, all, some, okay? So, singular pa rin po iyan. Alright? So, dun lang sila nagkakatalo. And that is rule number eight. Now, let's go to rule number nine. So, medyo bilisan na natin, no? So, rule number nine, collective nouns na tinatawag when we say family, jury, population. Okay? So, when we say family, jury, tsaka population, they function as collective nouns Meaning, iisa lang sila. No, one unit lang sila. Okay? So, pero depende pa rin siya sa ginapaggamit ng no? uh, author. Okay? So, that's why po pwede siya maging has arrived tsaka have arrived. Pwede maging is tsaka are. Pwede maging was tsaka were. Okay? Depende. Okay? So, on the writer's intent. Okay? So, yung family, jury, tsaka population. Okay? They are function most, no, often than not usually as singular. Okay, pero depende pa rin sa writer's intent kung magiging, uh, tawag dito, magiging plural siya. Okay, pero tatandaan most often than not or usually itong mga to, such collective nouns such as jury, family population, they function as singular. Okay, if they function as singular, then singular verb po ang kinagamit. No, that's rule number nine. And last rule, if Joe were, was here, you'd be sorry. Okay? So in this example, what do you think is the answer? Were or was? If Joe, okay, so alam naman natin, Joe is the subject. If Joe, no, were, was, here, you would be sorry. What do you think is the answer? Is it were or was? Okay? Identify first the subject, which is Joe, di ba? Okay? So most of your answers was. Okay? So definitely, if, uh, we will answer was, no? Kasi nga ang subject ay si Joe. Okay? Okay, but this is a different rule. Okay? So, kahit meron tayong Joe dyan na subject, okay, this is rule number 10. Sabi, the word were replaces was in sentences that express a wish or a contrary to fact. Okay? Kapag ang statement no, is imagined situation, no, a wished situation, okay, or hindi totoo, okay, paano natin malalaman na hindi totoo yung situation? Okay, meron tayong word na if. Okay? Meaning, this is just imaginary. Okay? If you wish for na ganito yung mangyayari, meron tayong word na if. Okay? Sabi, if Joe was, were, here, you'd be sorry. The correct answer is where. Okay? Ang dapat na isagot is were. If Joe were here, you'd be sorry. Bakit? Eh, sir, andito naman si Joe, ha? si Joe yung singular. On the sentence, present siya. Okay? Pero, uh, pagdating dito, no, Joe isn't actually here. 
Okay, so we say were. Okay, kasi if lang. If. Okay, kung naandito daw si Joe. Okay, you would be sorry. If. Okay, wala talaga si Joe. No, there is a presence of Joe here. Okay, but there is an imagined situation. Okay, by using the word if. Okay, kapag meron po tayong ganun, imagined situation, imaginary, wish. Okay, and we are uh, seeing the word if. Okay, so meaning where po ang gagamitin natin. Okay, kasi imagine situation lang siya. We disregard natin ngayon, no matter the subject is singular or plural, where po ang gagamitin natin. All right? Yan. Now, the sentence demonstrates the subjunctive mood, which is used to express things that are hypothetical, wishful, imaginary, or factually contradictory. Okay? So kapag hypothetical situation, wishful, tsaka imaginary situation, together with the word if, no matter the subject is singular, gagamit tayo ng were. Okay? Kasi po, yon ay hypothetical or nakasubjunctive mood. Alright? So were po ang gamit doon. Another example. I wish it was or were Friday. Okay? Most of us will use I wish it was Friday. Okay? Kasi parang wala namang mali. Okay, kapag ginamit natin, I wish it was Friday. Okay? So, but then again, let us take a look on the sentence. The sentence is wishful. Oh, this is a wishful statement. It is not a fact. Okay? So, you are wishing that Friday na ngayon. Okay? So, ang ginagamit natin kapag ganon is the verb were. Hindi po was. Kahit na yung it ay singular, were pa rin po ang gagamitin kasi it is a wishful statement. It is not a fact. It is imaginary. It is contradictory to factual. All right? So I wish it were Friday. That is the correct answer. Okay? I wish it were Friday. Okay? Pero tanggalin mo si I wish. It was were Friday. So it must be it was Friday. Okay? So meron tayong I wish. Okay? Kaya naging were na siya. Okay? I wish it were Friday. No? So I wish I were here. No? Kaya dati ginagamit yan, yung word. Okay? Because of the wishful statement. Okay? So, wag malilito doon. Okay, was tsaka word. Tignan muna yung statement. No? Kung hypothetically siya, or uh, imaginary lang, or uh, it is just a wishful statement. Okay? So, automatically word yun. Okay? So, yun. So, that's it. So, these are some of the misconceptions lang. So, just to add lang naman, Alright, so gusto ko lang mag-add ng mga iba pa. Okay, emigrate versus immigrate. Okay, so this is a common misconception. Okay, my grandparents emigrated to the United States. Mali po yun. Ang correct is my grandparents immigrated to the United States. Ano pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Si to immigrate is to go to a new place. Okay, pag sinabing immigrate, pupunta ka sa a new place. Pag sinabing emigrate, you are going to leave a place. Again, immigrate, pupunta ka. Emigrate, aalis ka. Alright? So that is the difference between the two. No? Emigrate, tsaka immigrate. Okay? You immigrate to places and emigrate from places. Okay? So ganun po yung pagkakaiba. Next, every day, tsaka every day. Okay, nakikita yung everyday na walang space tsaka everyday na may space. Okay, this is a common misconception then. Okay, mali po yung I get coffee before work everyday na magkadikit. Okay, kapag nagpa-pertain tayo, okay, sa araw o pang araw-araw, ginagamit natin is every na may space tsaka day. I get coffee before work everyday. Okay, nagkakapi ako bago mag-work no, araw-araw. Kapag araw-araw, okay, yung everyday dapat may space. Every, space, tsaka day. Okay? Kailan natin ginagamit si everyday na walang space? Okay? So ganito siya. Everyday, when used as a single word, is an adjective. Yung everyday na walang space, adjective po siya. Okay? Meaning commonplace, usual, or suitable for ordinary days. So when we say adjective, meron tayo din describe Okay? Adjective yung everyday na walang space. Dapat meron tayong noun na dinidescribe. Okay? Everyday work. Work is the noun. Dinidescribe the everyday si work. Everyday household chores. Everyday routine. Okay? 
So yun po yung paggamit ng everyday. Okay? So when we say everyday, it's ang araw-araw. When we say every day, it's araw-araw. Okay? So kapag araw-araw mong ginagawa, ang ginagamit po natin, every space day. Okay? Kapag naman adjective, ang ginagamit natin is yung one word na every day. Okay? Which is an adjective describing a noun. No? Everyday household chores, everyday routines, okay? Everyday exercises, okay? Everyday outputs. So doon natin ginagamit na. Pero kung araw-araw, I walk uh, in the street every day. Okay? I jump on the street every day. I sing no, in the bathroom every day. Okay? Magkahiwalay pong every tsaka na day yun. Alright? So yun po yung common misconceptions. Next, si respond tsaka response. So marami nagkakamali kay respond tsaka kay response. Yung respond ending with T, yun po ay verb. Yung response ending with E, yun po ay noun. Okay? Pag sinabing respond, yun ay pagsagot. Pag sinabing response, yun ay sagot. Alright? So, ano yung tama? Okay? Sorry for my late response. Yun ang tama, ha? Tama rin na sorry for responding late. Okay? So, that's correct. Pero maling-mali, nasasabihin natin, sorry for my late respond. Okay? Mali po yun, ha? Yung mali yung salitang sorry for my late respond. Dapat sorry for my late response. Okay? So, ang tama is thank you for your response. Hindi po yung thank you for your respond. Okay? So, makita ang pagkakaibahan ng respond tsaka response. Another misconception, eligible tsaka illegible. Okay? Pag sinabi nating eligible, it's, it means qualified. Pag sinabi naman nating illegible, it means unreadable. Okay? So let's say for example, I am eligible no, because I do pass the board exam. Okay? I am qualified. Okay? That is eligible. When we say illegible, your handwriting is illegible, meaning unreadable. Okay? Magkaiba po si eligible kay illegible. Okay? Qualified tsaka unreadable. All right? Next, yung word na further tsaka further. Okay? So magkaiba sila ha? Yung word na farther, tsaka further. Yung further is in its literal sense. No? It, it's talking about steps, miles, kilometers, etc. Distances. When we say further, figuratively siya, hindi siya literal. When we say further, it talks about feelings, motivations, patience, no? the will of yours. Okay? So farther is 10,000 miles. Okay? So get out of my way. Not for 10,000 miles or tawag dito, move, for, move farther away. Kasi sinabing move farther away, syempre, itong gagamit ang literal. Okay? Distance. Okay? So when we say further, okay, kind of further, uh, would you mind to further explain? Okay? Your answer. Okay? So ito yung figurative yun. Okay? Magkaiba po yung farther sa so further. Next, ito. This is a very misconception. Sina fill in, fill up, tsaka fill out. No, Napaka-misconception yan. Kalimitan, ginagamit natin si fill in, si fill in, si fill in. Especially sa forms, ginagamit natin si fill in. Alright? So, but the correct answer is ito. Okay? So, fill out this form. Make sure that you fill in all the blanks before you fill up your tank. That is the correct answer. Kapag form, mag-fill out po tayo, hindi mag-fill in. Alright, tatandaan na, kapag may forms, kaya hindi fill out this form. Okay? Kapag in naman, ginagamit na natin siya, okay, sa blank. Okay, make sure that you fill in all the blanks. Okay? So in an exam, kaya nga fill in the blanks. Okay, there are blanks there. Pero pagdating sa form, fill out the form. Fill in the blanks, fill up your tank. Okay? So, hindi fill in your tank ka, hindi rin fill out your tank. Kaya nga siya fill up kasi nga lalagyan mo siya. Okay? Para tumaas, fill up. Okay? The tank, fill out the form, and fill in the blanks. Okay? So, that's the proper usage of those three. Next, a lot versus a lot. Okay? A lot versus a lot. Okay? Yung a lot is marami. Yung a lot is binukod. Okay? 
Yung a lot is many, yung a lot is to designate. Okay? I have a lot of money. Okay? I have allotted you a money. Okay? Nakukuha? So, dinesignate yun a lot. Allotted. Okay? Magkaiba yun sa a lot na may space, which is many or marami. Next, si rarely tsaka barely. Okay? Magkaiba sila. Ang rarely, minsan o bihira lang. Kaya nga rare. Kapag barely, muntik nang di nangyari. O halos hindi. Okay, so yun yung pinagkaiba. When we say rarely, minsan lang or bihira lang. Kapag barely, muntik nang di nangyari o halos hindi nangyari. Okay? So barely tsaka rarely. Next, si assume tsaka presume. Okay? So assume tsaka presume. Okay, so when we say assume, it's little to no evidence. Presume naman is some evidence. Okay? So meaning presume, is greater than assume. All right? So when we say assume, no, meron tayong uh, konting ebidensya or wala. Okay? Kapag presume naman, meron tayong mga ebidensya. Okay? We have some evidence. Okay? So kapag pa sinabing I presume, meaning meron kang mga evidence. Pero pag sinabing I assume, okay, wala kang evidence. Or it's just a real one. Okay? So kaya mas powerful si presume. Okay, kasi meaning noon, marami kang evidence. Rather than I assume, no? Instead of I assume, no, I presume. Okay, so depende kung you have evidence. Okay, so that, ayun po yung pinagkaiba, no? So yung mga misplacing modifiers, okay, i-discuss ko yan next meeting. Okay, so medyo mahaba kasi yan, no? Pagdating sa modifiers. Okay, so yung mga yan, ay next meeting na i-discuss na no? mga modifiers, dangling, misplacing modifiers. Yung kama splice, doon din natin yung i-discuss. No? I would like you to ponder on this Oxford kama lang. Okay, first. So yung Oxford kama, ginagamit kapag katapos ng end or ng and. I had eggs, kama, toast, kama, and orange juice. Okay? So yan po ito. So gumagamit tayo ng kama pagkatapos or bago pala uh, mag-end. Kalimitan kasi ganito yung ginagawa natin. I had eggs, kama, toast, and orange juice. Wala nang kama bago mag-end. Okay? Pag ginawa natin yung I had eggs, kama, toast, and orange juice na walang kama, ganito po yung mangyayari. Magkasama si toast tsaka si orange juice. Okay? Pero we are using Oxford kama. I had eggs, kama, toast, kama, and orange juice. Okay? Para ito po yung kalabasan. Okay? So meaning, hindi magkasama si orange juice tsaka si toast. Kaya tayo gumagamit ng Oxford comma. Okay? So that is for a formal one, no? Pero syempre, conversationally, hindi naman natin ginagamit yun. Okay? Pero this is a formal academic writing. So dapat natin gamitin yun. Alright. So for the last slide, so last naman na to, I would like you to ponder lang on this how powerful punctuations are as well as grammar. Sabi ng English professor, okay, so nagsulat siya sa board. Okay? Nagsulat siya sa board at sabi niya, uh, all of the boys, tsaka all of the males, no, should punctuate no, this sentence accordingly. Okay? So lahat ng lalaki, no, ang ginawa doon, no, ito yung sinulat ng ano, professor. A woman without her man is nothing. Tuloy-tuloy. Verbatim yun. No close and open. Uh, tawag dito. Quoted rather. So sa lahat ng lalaki sinulat, a woman, kama, without her man is nothing. Of course, no, lalaki kasi yun eh. Okay, that's how powerful punctuation is. Sabi ng mga lalaki, a woman, kama, without her man is nothing. Right? So lahat naman ng babae sinulat, a woman, colon, Without her, man is nothing. Okay, nakikita yung pagkakaiba of uh, how, how, how powerful punctuations is or punctuations are. Okay, sabi ng mga lalaki, a woman, comma, without her man, comma, is nothing. Okay, sabi naman ng mga babae, a woman, okay, so uh, tawag dito, tawag dito, uh, colon, rather, a woman, colon, without her, man is nothing. Alright, so that's how powerful grammar as well as punctuation is or are. Alright, so ganun po. Okay, so it may, it may 
uh, cause misleading information kung hindi natin gagamitin ng ions. All right? Of course, no, all the females siguro dito pa panic. And all the males dito naman pa panic. All right? So this is just an example. No, no need for you to have a debate for that. And that will end my slide. All right. Question so far. Puti na ako. All right? So wala na, siguro tutuloy natin ang modifiers next meeting. All right? And then you have activity no, on your genio. So pakisagutan na lang. So I will show you lang. Ito pa. Entitled EAPP Lesson 2 Grammar Rules. Okay? So may activity dyan, 1 to 20, pakisagutan po na ayos. Okay, that will serve as your assignment. So is set permission ko sa inyo, no? So I think you have no questions now. Let's see you meet next meeting. Oti na tayo. So goodbye and God bless everyone. I hope that you have learned something new for today. Okay, so stay safe everyone.